Central Ohio's most watched evening news is on your side. You have never seen anything like this before. That's correct. That's correct. These are the worst values we've seen in the Columbus area um, and Ohio for that matter in the last 20 years. Right now at five, our live tower cam tells the story here. Code red day, the air unhealthy for everyone right now as you look live at that milky haze consuming our downtown Columbus skyline. Certainly a day to be weather aware. Smoke from the Canadian wildfires once again creating scenes we've become familiar with this month. This is video our team shot this morning showing the reddish orange sun rising over the downtown area. And our skyline certainly not the only one clouded by smog right now across the country from left to right. We look at Chicago, Cleveland in the middle there. Look at that. Wow. And Pittsburgh on the far right, the Midwest with some of the worst air quality in the world. Alerts in effect for roughly 80 million people in 20 states. We want to show you video of the smoke choking Montreal. It's officially the worst fire season on record for Canada. More than 200 wildfires are burning out of control. And this is the worst day for air quality in central Ohio. I expect it to slightly improve over the next few days, but it will still be unhealthy for sensitive groups. We have team coverage for you tonight. Kate Seifert looking into what the experts are saying about the unhealthy air and how some of you are finding ways to stay active and avoid it. First things, though, we're going to send it over to meteorologist Sarah Converse with more on the air quality. Sarah? Yeah, looking at poor air quality across the state of Ohio, we're right now in the unhealthy and very unhealthy category, so it's affecting everyone, all groups, whether you're sensitive or not, you may even smell it as you're going out through your day. And again, we've been saying it's not just us here, here in Ohio, it's all across the Midwest that's dealing with this smoke from the wildfires in Canada. Again, this air quality alert for Ohio is going to last a little after midnight, so we'll hang on to those hazy skies. But there is some good news in the forecast. We will see improvement in the air quality, but it's still going to be impacting people who are sensitive, especially if you have asthma, heart diseases. So tracking this out for you again in those reds and oranges, that's where we see that dense smoke that's really impacting our air quality here in the Midwest. Once those winds start to shift out of the south, that's what's going to help push that smoke away. So heading into Thursday afternoon, you can see the colors a little bit lighter in those green. That's good news. But again, if you are in those uns the sensitive category, just be cautious as you're going out through your day. Limit the time that you are outside. Reporting in the studio, I'm meteorologist Sarah Converse back to you. Thanks, Sarah. Now to some of the dangers of breathing in this smoky air and whether this is keeping people indoors today. Kate Seifert joins us live now from the arena district getting those answers and Kate looks like you're staying inside. Exactly, Haley. We're staying inside. We're telling you all to do the same exact thing. I'm at the Arena District Athletic Club. A walk on the treadmill, definitely a better idea than a long walk outside today. Experts telling us it's not safe to be outside for long periods of time with this poor air quality, even if you're one of the healthiest people. It's very similar to what you might experience if you were standing behind a diesel engine running. Another example, sitting in a car, windows up, with someone who's smoking cigarettes. Morpsey says the last time the air quality was this bad was in October 1999. But is this smoky air keeping people inside? How long have you been out so far today? Uh, about uh, 45 minutes. How are you feeling? I feel pretty good, pretty good. I can tell there's definitely a change in the atmosphere with the uh, wildfires in Canada. So I posted this poll today asking people, are they going to change their outdoor habits? Most people so far are saying they're not going to change their habits. Is that surprising? Um, I'd like to say I'm surprised. I think we've become a little complacent. I think a lot of people think that, well, you know, it is what it is. There's not much I can do about it. Tapping on that brings me to the full weather app and I can see that right now we're at 186 and that's in the unhealthy zone. Jennifer Middleton is a family doctor at Ohio Health. She's also a mom of two. Would you choose to send your kids to summer camp to their t-ball games in these conditions? With our current air quality index, which is above 150, I absolutely would not send them outside. The Columbus Clippers playing at Huntington Park tonight. We check with them on Twitter. The team tweeting they are keeping an eye on the air quality index, but for now, the game is scheduled as planned. 
Okay, so maybe the treadmill isn't your thing and you want to work out outside. Doctors do suggest breaking out these N95 masks. Once again, I know we're tired of them, but they will protect you with this unhealthy air quality, especially if you have any pre existing conditions. Live on your side in the Arena District, I'm Kate Seifert, ABC 6 News. Thanks, Kate. This is a good time to have our Ohio weather app handy. It will tell you when we're under an air quality alert and a lot more. Just search Ohio WX in your app store to have our entire team of first warning meteorologists right in the palm of your hand. For the third time in franchise history, the Columbus crew will host the Major League Soccer All-Star Game. Next year's, in fact, the announcement gathering a host of big shots, including the governor, the mayor, and the Major League Soccer Commissioner today. Our Clay Hall was there amidst the, amidst the giants of the sport in our country. Yes, a lot of pomp and circumstance. Mm -hmm. One of the things that struck me today was the trajectory the franchise has been on since the turmoil of uh, 2018 and 19. New stadium, increased fan following, a team that is fun to watch, headed for a playoff berth, and hosting a major event in 2024. Five years have passed since the crew outlasted a coup to remove the beloved black and gold. Trying to get it through, it's Ramirez! Now juxtaposed against the prosperity of a new stadium, a better team, and a fan base clearly galvanized to cheer them on. No pressure, no diamonds. You know, if you're not under a lot of pressure, great things don't happen. And we knew that it was going to be difficult, but we never lost focus on what it is that we need to do. We needed to align a number of different things. We all know the trajectory that it's on and, and what's happened over the last five years and sort of the pinnacle of that is to host a signature event of the league where all the global stars from our league as well as an opponent will come in uh, and the eyes will be on this city. And while the kids frolicked on the lower dot com pitch, the dignitaries gushed about the MLS All-Star game coming next summer. And so today, with the announcement of the All-Star Game, we're able to shine a light on Columbus. It's going to be a huge light, and, and we're up for the challenge, and we appreciate everybody's support in that. Dr. Pete, uh, we need an opponent, and a lot of people are conjecturing now that Messi is making his way to MLS. You'll, you'll just give him a buzz, get on the cell, and say, hey, bring some of your guys down, right? Well, we surely think it's going to be a great, great competition with the quality opponent that people are going to be thrilled to see. And uh, you never know, Messi's, he knows some people. Are you bringing Messi with you? No, he's bringing us with him. <laughs> the best supporters groups in all of Major League Soccer. The crew readies for their ninth straight sellout this weekend against the Red Bulls. Will be named later. It's usually been a well thought of European team. This year's All Star Game features Premier League power, Arsenal. On your side, I'm Clay Hall, ABC Six Sports. Thanks, Clay. Now that we know the major news from Major League Soccer, we can expect it to bring in major money to Columbus. Tom Bosco continues our team coverage, looking into that part of the story for us. In the short north, Adrian Tara loves soccer. I used to play with him in Europe in Albania, in Germany. That was before he opened his Happy Greek restaurant in the short north 20 years ago. He gets even happier when Columbus hosts conventions and major sporting events. We are very busy when it's convention, all short north. We got like 50% more business from convention. <laughs> The city of Columbus is set to welcome another big draw, the MLS All-Star match next year. It's the third time the All-Star game has come to Columbus. Next year we'll also see the World Figure Skating Championships here. This year saw the NCAA men's basketball host a few rounds of the tournament and a number of conventions and conferences like the U.S. Mayor's Conference. All conferences and events that we would have never dreamed of hosting in Columbus 10 or 15 years ago. Big for Ohio is big for Columbus. The governor says there are intangible benefits. We'll have the opportunity for them not only to, to see the soccer match, but for them to explore Columbus and then go back home and talk about it. But what about the tangible ones, like the dollars generated by an event like this? What kind of a boost do other All-Star games provide? We'll make the comparison with the NHL since the arenas are about the same size. In 2011, the Carolina Hurricanes hosted the NHL All-Star game. They said more than $11 million was spent by folks visiting. 
In 2015, the CBJ hosted the NHL All-Star Game right here in Columbus. It was expected that brought in more than $12 million in visitor spending. Folks here in Columbus say the MLS All-Star Game could top that by a lot. We estimate the direct spending for this event could be as high as $20 million for that big week of activities in Columbus. In the short north, that makes Adrian Tara very happy. He says the Arnold is his big event of the year, but he predicts the MLS All-Star Game will top that. I think it's going to do better. I like that. <laughs> I like to see it. On your side in the Arena District, I'm Tom Bosco, ABC6 News. We're also looking to make a major impact on central Ohio. We here at the station here, the need for blood as important as ever, actually more important in the summer months often. And the annual ABC6 Fox 28 Blood Drive is underway. So let's send things over now to Seth and H. Haynock out there with more on how you can help save lives. Seth? Yeah, well, Bob, I'm here live in Hilliard at the McCoy Center where the Red Cross has been opening its doors to over 300 donors today who are coming in to make a difference to help save lives here in the community and donate their blood. Now, you know, this typically runs from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and they are requiring appointments, but just about an hour ago, they've decided to allow walk-ins to come in only until 645. So if you're getting off work, if you think you can swing by real quick, it only takes about an hour, come on over. They will allow you to come in without an appointment and make that donation. I'll take a look behind me. They have some people here right now actually making those donations, making a difference here in our community. Now, if you can't make it this evening, Red Cross would like you to make an appointment for tomorrow. That is the second and final day of this donation uh, center being up here at the McCoy Center. Again, they're going to be opening up at 7 a.m. tomorrow to 7 p.m. So plenty of slots for you to reserve your time. Come in, take an hour out of your day make that donation and head on out. Now we are going to be speaking with Don Hawk Hawkins from Red Cross later in the show. Um, he's going to give us more numbers from today as far as what Red Cross has seen, total numbers of people walking in to make donations, and maybe even the total amount of blood that they have been able to collect so far. So stay tuned. It's been a successful day here at the McCoy Center, and it's going to keep being a successful day tomorrow. Just go ahead and make your appointment at redcrossblood.org. I'm live on your site, Stephanie Chainock. Back to you. Pieces of the lost submersible back on land. We're seeing the debris from that doomed voyage recovered from the ocean floor coming up in just four minutes. And a family of seven's only source of income stolen. They're speaking out to ABC6, hoping you can help them out coming up at 531. First, though, big night for Blue Jackets fans. Hey, what are you cooking up there, Kellyanne? Hey, Bob, fans are already starting to trickle in here at Mechanical Pins in Easton. The doors open at 4 p.m. All the fans I've talked to are very excited. Of course, they would love to see Connor Bedard come to Columbus, though that is very unlikely as he's going number one. But they are still super excited to see who the Blue Jackets pick at three. And we hear from the guy calling the shots, General Manager Yarmo Kekalainen, coming up. And let's give you another quick live look over downtown Columbus. The air quality alert remains in effect for the next few days. Jim Ganahl has your full forecast coming up at 518.